Well, it's true that if you own a vehicle, someday you're going to need brakes, tires, ball joints, suspension work, shocks, stuff like that. Here's just some things to know. First, there is a difference between summer and winter tires. If you've got a good quality winter tire, it's got a different tread pattern and it actually has a different compound in the rubber, usually graphite particles, to help it stick to ice. So it actually does have better traction in snow by its tread pattern and it actually stops better on ice. There also is different compounds in tires like aniline. Aniline makes your rubber harder and that makes your tires last longer. So if you buy a more expensive tire, you can expect you may be getting your money's worth because you're going to go more miles on it. Now a bit about the brakes. Nowadays on most cars, rotors are so cheap and they're so poor that just about every time you need to do a brake change, you change your rotors too. Well, when you go into a garage, they always like to point out, oh look, you've only got 30% pad life left. Oh, you better get everything changed before it wears out because then it's going to cause more damage. Well, that's stupid. If you're going to have to change your rotors anyways, you might as well drive till it starts grinding metal on metal or very close to it. Since you're not causing more damage, you're going to replace them anyways. So don't fall for that. If I wouldn't even think about changing my brakes unless I seen one millimeter or less, you know unless I knew I wasn't going to be able to in the near future. Next is your shocks and struts. Well, of course, when your vehicle gets older, it's likely that they're going to start leaking slowly. Well, they still work fine. It's not till almost all the fluid is leaked out of them before they lose their effectiveness. The best way to check is step on the bumper or put your knees on there so you don't scratch it, whether it be front or rear, and do one corner at a time. Give a good hard bounce with all your weight. The car should do one and a half free bounces or less when you get off. That means they're still good. Of course, if it bounces longer than that, you may want to decide to change the shock sooner than later. If you have bad shock absorbers, when you're hitting bumps going down the road, your tire is actually riding in mid-air for short periods of time, and that's caused you to lose traction and lose control. Especially if you're hitting bumps going around corners, your tires start bouncing doing that, you notice your car start to float over and move across a piece of dry pavement around a good corner. Shocks can become noisy too, sometimes because the rubber bushings at each end are worn out, but it's usually because the main bushing with the chrome post is worn. It's another reason why the oil leaks out, so you may have a rattly clunky sounding shock and that would be a reason to change it. Well, next is steering joints, tie rod ends, and ball joints. Every car's got them and they're very important. If some garage is working on your vehicle or checking it for you and they show you that this is loose when they shake the wheel or move it, change it. If it gets too loose, your tie rod can let go, just pops right off, and you lose your steering in that wheel. Not good. If your ball joint is loose, that's much scarier. Then your wheel can let go, it can move right out sideways, get tucked underneath the fender, break the axle, cause it to skid, cause fender and door damage, and possibly suck you into oncoming traffic or into a ditch. Now the higher the speed you're going, the scarier that's going to be. Then there's sway bar links. These things come in all shapes and sizes and just, some cars have them on all four wheels, some just have them on the front. Some don't have any sway bars at all, or any links. Although a worn out sway bar goes clunkety clunk and stuff like that on bumps, it sounds maybe just like a bad tire end or a bad ball joint. It's not actually a safety issue. A sway bar stops body roll or lessens body roll around hard cornering. For example, if this van was doing a hard turn in that direction, then the body would want to roll that direction towards the outside of the turn by centrifugal force. Well, that means that that wheel is being lifted up higher into the fender well on the opposite side. So it's lifting the lower control arm up to go with it. So to help reduce body roll, that sway bar comes all the way across and it's attached by that link I just showed you to the lower control arm on the far side and it's attached on this side at the same place. When that other control arm gets squished upwards or the body is being pushed down, whichever way you want to describe it, it transfers some of the energy to this wheel and lifts that wheel up, lifts that wheel up and that prevents this spring from putting so much force helping tip the vehicle when the vehicle is turning in this direction. So if your sway bars are making all those clattering noises, 
they're still functioning absolutely perfectly fine and perfectly safely. It's not till they finally get so loose or the bolt gets rusted and they break or the ball and socket comes apart that your vehicle actually will experience a little bit more tippiness and hard cornering. But most people, unless they're driving like a slalom course or something, probably aren't even going to notice. But it is an issue in case you have to have your vehicle done for a safety inspection. They have to be in good condition. Vehicles with rack and pinion steering have inner tie rod ends too, which are sealed inside a rubber boot. Well, it's easy to check by moving the wheel back and forth when the car's jacked up if they have play too. And if they have play, it's recommended that you change them soon. Other cars have a, a ball type steering system in a steering box. It's called recirculating ball. It's uh, not as a precise a system. You always have a little bit of play in your steering wheel. Well, the m more play, the older your more worn out your vehicle is. Most vehicles, nothing will ever happen, and that box will last the life of the vehicle. But there is a few vehicles when the box gets old and tired, you then have no connection and you lose your steering. Another myth is that every time you get a ball joint or tire end changed, oh, you've got to have an alignment. They want to sell you that to make some easy, easy money. Not true most of the time. A ball joint has no adjustment. It just pretty much goes back in the same exact way it came out. So when you put a new ball joint in to replace a worn out one, it brings all your suspension measurements exactly up to the way they were supposed to be, so long as you haven't hit anything or had an accident in between. On a tie rod end, if you screw the tie rod back into the same place it was before against the locking set nut that's over here, chances are it's going to put your steering exactly back in the same toe and position it was before. On many modern cars, especially General Motors cars of all shapes and sizes, their lower control arms, where they attach to the frame, are attached by big round rubber bushings with a bolt going through the middle. Well, the rubber bushings are factory glued to the steel, and when they get a few years old, rust gets in there and just wear, and the rubber starts separating from the steel, and they're always trying to sell you new control arms or replacement rubber bushings, which are pretty hard to reattach sometimes and it's very expensive so if the rubber is only partially separated don't believe them it's not till they're more than 50 percent or more separated that you can consider changing one of those and it's not a hundred percent safety issue when the rubber bushing is completely separated the car just has a little bit of sway other than that it still dries pretty good the steering kind of feels a bit wonky too like loose but loose like it's in goo or something, not like a clunkety loose. Many vehicles even have similar control arm bushings in the rear, but they're just sort of mounted in a different position. Another thing that commonly goes wrong with the suspension and steering of many vehicles is upper strut bearing plates. That's the round plate with the bolts on it that the spring goes on on the one side and it attaches to the shock tower on the other side. Just from rust and corrosion, these bearing plates seize up. And when you're cranking your wheel, sure the wheel will still turn, but the spring starts to twist and take up the movement instead of the plate turning. And the spring can jump on its pad and you'll hear bonk, bonk, or kunk, kunk noises as you're cranking the wheel one way or all the way the other way. Another symptom is, for example, if you're backing out of your driveway and you've got the wheels cranked all the way one way, put the car into drive and go to pull forward, the steering wheel just doesn't bring itself back to center by itself. You've got to manually bring it back. And sometimes after you're done doing that, the steering will always want to pull that way. But then the next time you back up or turn around and do a hard turn the other direction, the steering wheel will want to sit a little bit cocked off the other way. That's a sign. Another thing is when you're getting brake jobs done by shops, and if you're not doing them yourself, very often they're going to tell you you need new calipers. Well, don't believe them. If the pads are worn out on each side equally, they're probably not seized. And if the vehicle is fairly modern, they're probably not seized. If you want to know if your calipers are seizing, you just go for an ordinary drive, you know, several times doing some braking, then just pull over and stop, take your hubcaps off, or if you've got no hubcaps or aluminum wheels, that's even better, and feel both sides. Sure, they should be warm, but if one side's hot, well then, then, you're t then that's telling you that you could have a seized caliper or at least seized sliders. Of course, if you ever see any leakage from a brake cylinder or from a caliper, then it's definitely time to change it. 
If you ever see any cracks deep enough in your front brake flex hoses or rear flex hoses that you can see the white cord inside, change them immediately. Sometimes people who work at repair garages, like especially the big name brand ones, are trained how to fear monger, how to show you things which may look dangerous but really aren't, how to talk to you in a way to, to scare you, to just to get, you know, more business. Some places make for example, the employee makes 20% on every sale or every party sells the customer. So it's in their best interest to make you have an over-service vehicle, not your best interest.